this is part two of our shearing video. Arnie's going to head out to the barn tonight, do his chores, and check up on those ewes. January! January and February lamb, ram lambs. So th these were the ewes that were in such poor shape. Remember about a month or two ago we were talking about if it? she doesn't get bred, no harm done. I'm not going to hold it against her. I think the sheep are a lot quieter if they have a little bit of light. If so, let's get started. So today was our last day sharing for the year. These are all uh, these are all the replacement lambs. They all got shorn off today. They look a little cold tonight, but I'm sure they'll be fine. They're all in great shape, you can see that. So, I'm just doing chores tonight. Hey, buddies. Nice bunch of lambs. Good flashy sheep. Hey buddies. So as you can see, you can see what I'm wearing. I'm ha uh, it's, uh, it's extremely cold today. So we're done shearing for the whole year. Um the only thing we'll probably uh, do a little different this year is uh right now it's the middle of October. So uh, I think what we'll do the, uh, different this year is the middle of October. So when we start lambing in uh, January, February, March, uh, since we have the new clippers that some kind person gave to us, uh, the cordless slippers, we're probably going to do a lot more crutching this year. Uh, that means when the ewes come in, they're going to have quite a bit of wool on them by February. And <laughs> any sheep that's a little bit uh, dirty at the back end or around the others, we're probably going to trim uh, probably each one of the ewes up as they come in and have lambs just to keep them tidier Probably work a little bit more on that this year But uh, right now I'm just doing the chores And uh, the nine little ram lambs that are over this side um, They broke out last night. I won't tell you what happened But they broke out nasty little buggers and uh I can't take a chance in those nine new rams anymore. We moved them out to the other barn. And I'm going to that barn right now and I'll show you where they are. But that's all I can do here for tonight. They have enough hay and uh, the curtains are all up. You can see it's a breeze coming right through here. But I'm wearing a sweatshirt and a vest and I'm still cold. So it's a lot different temperature than it was uh, two weeks ago when we were still bailing hay. Hit the next barn. I'll tell you what's going on there. The nine little ram lambs ended up over here where they can't do any more damage. And uh, we, uh, so what we did was we put them in this front quarter. Because these are pretty small lambs, ram lambs. So they might not, uh, they might not get along with this group over here, which is a little older. So they're locked at the back. So these are all, these are all uh, January, January and February lamb, ram lambs. So these are the very best ones we had. We hand picked these quite heavily. So they're, they're in the back corner here and we put this wall up and we kept the little lambs up here. So, and these are the mature ones. There's a few of them in here that are retired. They're going to live the rest of their life here. They're never going to go away. And I'm going to feed them right now because it's late. Yeah, and uh, this is the first night for these guys over here. So they look fine. It's a new pen, so they got their uh, they got their face a little bit in the knot, but I'm sure they'll be fine. 
So anyways, I'm just checking everybody to make sure everybody's okay. And I better give them a little bit of green. So I just fed all these guys. That's a pretty consistent group there. On this side here, most of these lambs are uh, are first timers. So, and that's the ram right there with the red stripe on him. He was born in January, so he's a younger fella. We're gonna try and see what happens there. Uh, definitely won't be uh, definitely won't be uh, worse. It'll be the same or even better. We'll see what happens. But they all got a little bit of grain. They're flushing them out to get them to uh, deliver eggs. That's an old ewe right there. That'll probably be her last year. Sorry to say that. And a couple of groups of Dorsets back here. Just a couple of small groups we had left over. So these were the these were the ewes that were in such poor shape. Remember about a month or two ago we were talking about it? But you can see they really put the condition back on. That was my uh, fault that they were in poor shape. I just was not paying attention to them. But you can see uh, they really put the weight back on. There's nothing wrong with that right now. Yeah, that's a, that's a real odd you we purchased. I don't know why we purchased that you. I'm not going to talk about it. But if I had my choice, I'd never buy it again. But she's here. We'll make the best of it. She actually gave a beautiful uh, ewe lamb. But uh, the lamb was born quite small. I don't know why, because she's a monster. So, great shape. That ewe there could be in a little better shape yet, but she's doing fine. This is uh, Seamus, or is it Seamus? Yeah, Seamus, I think it is. He's a fantastic Dorset man. Too bad he's got such a small group this year. But next year we'll have him on a full group. So, talking about the future. And that's the ram in the back that I showed at, uh, at, the, at the fairs a couple years ago. We're using him. First time using him. So, we'll see how he turns out. But, yeah, see, these ewes have really put the weight right back on. Pretty happy with that. No complaints there, they just bounce right back. A little bit of whole corn and some good hay with a falf in it. See, that hay, ha that hay actually has a little bit of a, uh, I mean, it's nice hay, but it's not super fine. But uh, they do really fine on it. A little bit of rough, a little bit of coarseness in the hay will make the rumens uh, move and uh, animal, it's a good diet for animals, so. Nothing wrong with having a little bit of coarseness. And this group here has got a ram in here with 40 ewes. I think the spot's a little small. So I think the uh, next couple of days we're going to ask Lynn if we're going to move this wall here back a little bit. Since there's not lots of room back here. And that will give uh, this pen a little more space. Uh, there's 40 ewes in this group with one ram. And that's a monster U right there. Oh, that's a, that U stands out a lot. Hopefully it doesn't only give me one lamb. Because most of the time that's the reason why those sheep are so big. They only give one lamb. But anyways, hope for the best. But that's a big U. That's a extremely big U. I would love to weigh that U someday. Just put, them in the, put that U in the tail. So there was a few sheep in here right there. That one there. That needs more condition. But those uh, ewes uh, had lambs uh, real late in the spring. And we pulled the lambs off them and put them right back in with the ram. So we'll see how that turns out. If she doesn't get bred, no harm done. I'm not going to hold it against her. But I'm thinking uh, she's being fed quite hard. She'll probably cycle. So there's a couple in here that need a little more condition. That one there needs a little more condition. You want to see them in nice shape if you're trying to flush them. 
So otherwise they look good. I just check them every night when I feed them. There is a ram right there with no mark on it. I do like that ram. He's uh he's uh yeah, it's lost. You can talk about that ram, but that's a nice ram. I like that ram a lot. We're really good on the feet. That you there with the stripe on the back, uh, she had a real bad uh, crack in her hoof, but I treated her for three, four days and trimmed her, and she's doing fine right now. But if you didn't look, if you didn't look after that hoof, uh, that hoof would have been uh, would have turned out to be rot foot. But I caught it in time. I trimmed it. Couple, uh, two or three days drugs with some copper tox, and I uh, got the foot healed right up, and she's doing fine. So that's all. That's all I can do here tonight. And I'm going to shut this barn down. And uh, I'll be here in the morning. Just shut the lights off. That one light in the center of the barn there, it stays on all night long. It's just a little bit of light. Uh, it's just a little bit of a comfort light for the night hours that no one panics. And I'm just going to see what these rams are doing right now. So. And they all look good. So I'm just going to, I'm just going to uh, kick the hay in a little bit. That everybody has hay tonight. And that's it for this barn too. And then we're going to head over to the old barns. And see how those groups are doing. So this barn is all done, just kick the hay in a little bit. Uh, that one light there in the center is acting up on me. I gotta fix that. But I wanna do the same thing here. So in this barn here, there's only three lights. There should be two more at the very back, but they never got installed. But I wanna do the same thing in this barn. That, uh, that back light, I wanna have it on a timer that every night when the lights go out, that one stays on, just for to give the sheep a little bit of uh, a little bit of light, what's going on in the darkness. And I'm just gonna run a separate cord to that light, right down the wall here, the beam. And we'll take it right down there. And we'll probably put a little timer right there and tie it in the electrical box. And every night, that light will come on on its own and shut off during the daytime. I like that. I think the sheep are a lot quieter if they have a little bit of light. If a raccoon walks in at night or something uh, frightens them, they just are a little more comfortable. I like that idea. I like to do it to all the barns. So, these are always, they're all doing good. So, I guess there's not much more I can do here right now. I think I'm going to head out, and we're going to head to the next barn. So I got all these fed. They look good. Oh uh, yeah, Lynn, uh, Lynn just bought a little tripod uh, for me uh, to hold the camera a little more steadier. And I'll probably, uh, tomorrow night, I'll, I'll set it up every time when I'm doing chores and you can see how we're feeding animals Because now they've already been fed and you didn't get to see any of it uh, So maybe I'll try to do that tomorrow for chores and go through all the chores so Hey girl, you look in good shape So everybody looks good as long as everybody came up to eat. That's all I'm worried about and all the suffix are up. So this is where we were sharing today, right here. So there's my shoots behind the wall there. I took them all down. So we just set it up here. And he hung the, uh, share, the share right up in that rope. And this is where we did it all. And then I just took it down. And we'll probably leave that up for the winter months. That, uh, that corralling pen. Because it's always a good place to put a U or catch a U in there. So these are all fed too. And we're just looking to make sure everybody's okay. And remember what I said, 
don't overfeed these dorsets. Dorsets don't like to be overfed. They're gonna, they'll, uh, they'll, uh, they'll prolapse if you feed them too hard. Very hard to get a suffix to prolapse. But a dorset will prolapse quite easily if they're overfed. And these guys are, yeah, I wouldn't want them any heavier. Because right now they could be, uh, they could be on their second month with lambs already pregnant, so. Everybody looks good. That's Mr. Ram right there. He didn't lose a drop of weight. I'd like to see that. That means he's an easy keeper. Very important that the sheep keep the weight on easily. So, and where is this ram here? Hey buddy, where are you? Oh, there he is. See, I don't know if you can pick him out, but he's the same size as I used. He's a perfect fit. So, there he is. Still got the number on his back. And he actually, I think, I make a judgment, but I'm thinking he's gaining weight right now. So he's, uh, yeah, I'm happy for that, because that means he's an easy keeper. They, uh, they keep their weight on well, and that's what you want. You want to have sheep that don't take a lot of maintenance, and they keep the weight on well. So there's nothing more I can do here. I'm going to head out. And if I get, if I use a little tripod small, uh, the camera will be maybe a little more steadier. And it won't be so up and down when every time I'm moving. So I'm gonna shut these lights off. And this barn's good. There's nothing more I can do here. So everybody's eating, that's all I'm worried about. So uh, tomorrow I'll set the camera up uh, every time I feed a lot and you can see how I'm feeding them. And uh, we got uh, 16 bags of wool to go out. I have a 20 foot uh, trailer so hopefully we can get them all in the trailer in one load. That'll be a pretty, uh, that'll weigh up pretty good actually. I fed the cats. Right, can you see them? Where are they? Oh right there they are. So we had a helper today, Megan. I think it's Megan. I'm hoping I'm pronouncing that correctly. Uh, so she she's became a friend of ours, and she came over to help. And she said something she's probably going to regret tonight. She said she would help us anytime we needed a hand. I don't know why she said that because that could be a bad thing. Could be I be taking advantage of that. But she was a great help today. I didn't pick up hardly any wool at all. She picked everything up, and uh, it's always a little bit of help, always helps when you're shearing. The more help you can get, the better it is. So, I think we're going to call that a night. Oh, i turn this light off too, actually. There we go. Oh. I don't know if we're gonna have, uh, I don't know if we're gonna take the wool away tomorrow or not. She was talking about loading it up in the morning and getting rid of it because it's just kicking it down now it's in the way. And uh, I'm gonna go have a drink and watch the news channel. And I guess we're gonna call this a day. So beans haven't come off yet. Uh, it's raining today. It actually was hailing here today, hail coming down. But they're saying in a few more days we're gonna go up to 20 Celsius. Uh, sunny, so I'm hoping the beans will come off at that point. Uh, we have probably uh, two days of beans coming off, uh, and my custom sprayer hasn't shown up yet to spray the fields. So I gave him a call this morning. Uh, he says uh, to spray Roundup, you have to have a certain temperature. It was a little too cool, he thought. So we're going to wait for these warm days, and then we're going to kill off that field. And I'll talk about how we're going to process that field for next year for corn. So I think we're going to call that a night. Thanks for joining us. We really appreciate it. Uh, su subscribe. Click. Give a like. Tell somebody. Tell a friend. And we'll see you tomorrow. And we'll tell you what's going on. Have a good evening. Talk to you later. <laughs>